is, is, is it's key for us in Red Hat in Cleveland. But there's so much going on and we just want to sort of bring you together today to you know inform you and show you that you know that, that, that there is a bit of a plan of going forward and how we can help and support social enterprise activity. And, and yeah, just welcome and thanks to everybody for taking the time out of the diary. Um, I've only been at the School for Social Entrepreneurs for, uh, for two months, uh, but I'm a triple graduate of the School for Social Entrepreneurs. I've done their startup programme, their art programme, and their, their, their scale up programme. I've been in and about social enterprise for 16 years. I've worked as, a, uh, as an advisor, as a coach, and a, and a mentor. Uh, but seven years ago, I decided to, to jump in and set up my own social Set up uh, the Grand Old Duke of Source. Uh, which uh, was a chilli sauce manufacturer that spent its profits on, uh, on, on enterprise programmes for uh, young people in, in special schools. It really developed a, a confidence in that school around using social enterprise to deliver enrichment activities and the impact that that could have uh, on, on young people. And that was based on the passion of the people who run social enterprises. They employ at least three social enterprises a year to run their enterprise project. Uh, for me, this is a hugely important thing. The young people's attendance and, uh, and, and success in their education increased uh, heavily because they enjoyed the, the enterprise programme uh, so much. It was a, it's a great success. Uh, you know, a couple of years on, uh, I'd helped my local town hall set up as a charity. Um, and uh, they asked me if I would become a trustee. Um, in the first year we turned over uh, £20,000, uh, not very much, but within three years we were turning over £110,000. Um, and what I wanted to do with the town hall was develop uh, traded income uh, over uh, grant funding. You probably see a theme in me. I don't. I, I, grant funding is great. I love it, but I think the restrictions uh, that it brings and the uh, you know, it's a constant thing every twelve months. If you're really lucky to get you know a three or five year chunk of funding, it's great. Uh, but actually, if you're stuck in this cycle of having to apply for funding year after year. Sometimes you're spending more time doing that than you are delivering. Uh, so I entered into a partnership with a promoter uh, who ran a blues club. Um, and she started uh, bringing in uh, blues acts that, you know, the week before might have been in Memphis in America. Uh, and then they're in Silsden in, uh, in West Yorkshire. Over that year, uh, just that Blues Club made us £17,000 in, in profit. Then, to continue that build of traded income, uh, I set up a, a, a local partnership in, in the town. Uh, and that was, you know, we have uh, four or five community assets uh, that could compete, uh, but I would prefer us, us, us not to. Uh, and so we started sitting down and talking about um, what, what can we do to refer people uh, to each other? We would take a potential booking uh, for a, a, a party uh, for young people. Uh, and actually our building isn't really great for that, but we have a purpose-built youth centre in the, in the town. So actually, why aren't we referring that booking onto them? Uh, and so over a period of time, we've all seen our bottom lines grow because we're referring it to each other. So those partnerships uh, are, have been hugely important uh, in, the, in the development of the town hall. You know, we were severely impacted by, by COVID um, and we lost £48,000 in, uh, in, in two years. Uh, but because of the amount of traded income in the previous years, our reserves uh, were, were great. We didn't have the problem of having a lot of money in the bank, but it was all restricted income because it was grant funding. We actually had our own money, so we were able to, to, to weather the storm pretty well. My learning uh, over this period is, and I think I've already mentioned it, is about those kind of first years as a social enterprise uh, and finding that your grant fund reliance uh, and the importance of trying to find a way to get some uh, traded income, to increase your trade income, even if it's just a little bit, because funders like uh, to see uh, organisations that can make their own way. So if, uh, if you've got a bit of trade coming in, they know you're not solely relying on them, which can be a real uh, 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 negative for a funder. Uh, there's going to be uh, a bunch of support for social entrepreneurs, so I would, 
you know, I, I, I would suggest to take to take that opportunity because uh, it's very important. And then uh, there are some mentoring opportunities from uh, from talent. And you know, as somebody who's been mentored and, 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 and is a mentor as well, I think mentor opportunities are, are great. And I use my mentor as a sounding board. Uh, I used to talk to her about all kinds of off the wall ideas when I was running the Grand Old Duke of Source. And she would pull me back. And because I don't think in straight lines, I have quite a chaotic mind. Uh, she was very kind of quite linear uh, and it really helped me think. Uh, about uh, what I was doing and how I was going to achieve it. When I'm mentor and I do a lot of signposting, uh, I'm quite well connected uh, where I'm from. Uh, so, you know, it can really uh, help people increase their trade, business to business work, business to customer work, so it can uh, push people in different directions, but also, Given me background, I also know graphic designers and uh, you know people who will do a bit of pro bono work or legal advice. Uh, so that, that kind of signposting element is, is, is hugely uh, important. It can be great when mentors do that for you. And the other bit is, you know, you develop a friendship uh, and, a, and a trust and, and, and a confidence uh, with someone. For me personally, you know, it's really important that you're able to sit in a safe space and talk about issues. Uh, that you might not necessarily feel comfortable about. So, you know, mentoring opportunities are, you know, hugely uh, important. And again, I set up a social enterprise uh, business centre in Keithley. Uh, the charity that I worked for ran a school there and the school failed. And uh, the tenancy with the council was extremely restrictive, so we couldn't sublet. I just simply couldn't employ enough volunteers to look after a three and a half acre uh, site with a woodland. So I started giving space away, uh, and the first organisation that came through was called the Responsible Timber Company. Uh, they made things out of wood that would otherwise go to landfill, um, and they did it with people with disabilities, mental health issues, uh, old, young, whoever, you know, it didn't really matter. Uh, and then one of the next uh, organisations that came on were a woodland project, uh, and they planted a lot of trees, but they also did tree surgery. So they started bringing back big, uh, big logs, and we were like, well, "Why don't we? Why don't we buy them off you?" Three forest schools in our woodland, who then wanted seating uh, and another bit. So then we started producing uh, for them. And so, so you know, on this site, uh, there is there is a cyclical uh, economy. And it, it doesn't mean that it's very inward looking because they do an awful lot of trading outside. But I actually think the, the real power of uh, you know, working with your peers um, can be that you know, your, your bottom line grows. So, thank you. The business is about listening, it's about connecting, it's about observing, it's about speaking out, it's about talking to people and seeing what else somebody else can do for you. This industry is continuing to have that challenge. Uh, I'm raising it now because we're talking about challenges, how your partnership can help you to run your business. It's about listening, it's about connecting, it's about observing, it's about speaking out, it's about talking to people and seeing what else somebody else can offer you. So that's how they manage and um, they're learning a lot more on the industry as they go along. So currently things are booming, as you can see. We're very, very, very thankful for the community support and I couldn't say that, you know, enough. A really, really good, good work out there and it's all of those items are raising them some money, which is earned income. They're not restricted. They can spend it on anything that they wish. It's not a grant like Paul was trying to say earlier that tells you you can only spend it on this particular kind of person. You can only do X amount of hours of this training. That money comes in and you can spend it as they wish on the business. So that's a big, big advantage of having your own business. As it says there, they triple, currently they triple any income that the previous owners had. And that for them is giving a measure of sustainability. It's a mix, isn't it? And this is the strength of carrying the community with you. Because you will always discover a new need that you probably never thought of. Then continuing to work with community and also keeping that focus and leading on whatever issues were brought to them so that they can make sure it's aligned with their vision. It's very, very easy to get carried away because then there's differentiates between just having a good community group that is just enjoying themselves and one that has got eyes on trading to earn money. 
they're very different. Uh, as Paul said, the challenge is always this division between, you know, should I keep applying for grants, should I keep working and earn my own money? I think the balance comes as you grow, doesn't it? If you begin to learn the ropes and you know exactly where to focus. And if you know Loftus well, it's not necessarily filled with millionaires. So for them to be able to raise money through these activities shows you the love, the passion, the interest, the connection, the, the togetherness, if you like, of the community and benefiting the most you can by working with people. Uh, you can only imagine the number of people, families, groups that might have been involved in doing all of that. That for me is a strength. I think back, this was a social club owned privately that was going to go to be closed and a few people just said no we can't let it go to close let's think how we're going to use it as to why we're partnering are we doing it as part of the objectives of the business so that's a very key point for us to note don't just partner for partnering sake sorry we're not telling stories just so you hear how good they've been we're telling it so you can draw your own principles from them if i stood here giving you a lecture on partnership a lecture on marketing it just sound really really textbooky but this is the reality of how they've done it. <clears throat> Sometimes just knowing who and who in the community can help you. Community here, as I always say to people when they come for the first time, community isn't just your local geographical community. It's about the network of people who believe in this model of trading. It can be anywhere in the world even, as long as it's contributing and adding value to what it is you're offering. And you can add value to it. That's why we're doing this. We will never give up. Thank you. I think that's the end. Yeah, thank you. That's all we need. And what business are we in? I still don't know. I just know that I'm driven to make a difference. I want to make a difference to me. I want to make a difference to everyone. I don't want to contact with them. every organization. I left, I left um, logos off from where I am because that's quite difficult. So uh, and the reason is, is I'm not, I'm not sort of easy to categorise. I don't think in categorise. I don't put cells in boxes, and I try to avoid them. I think I'm better for it. I think business is better for it. So today I'm Ian Caldwell. I'm interested in social enterprise, enterprise development. I mean, I wasn't really interested in social enterprise. I just needed to solve a problem, and it was a solution. So I set one up. Uh, I joined uh, a. Let's Connect, what it was called Hard Police Set of Mind, 20 years ago. I knew I was in business, and it was a charity, but I was in business, I need to make money, I need to collect data, I need to prove the factor, I need to tell a story, I need to show that I'm better than everyone else in the country and in the world. So that was my business plan. And what business am I in? I still don't know. I just know that I'm driven to make a difference. I want to make a difference to me, I want to make a difference to everyone I come in contact with and every organisation. So I'm up to some purpose, plan, vision or here, and then I have to deal with reality and that's why I struggle with people and other things because they're not on the same page and I haven't told anyone what page I'm on. So it gets a bit complicated but I get stuff done. I was interested in doing things differently and being the best and, and, and making the, the biggest impact in people's lives. So if that's called well-being, that's called mental health, community development, educational learning, or social work, whatever it's called it is, it's the thing that makes a difference, the way. So I've always been interested in the way. I want to do the way. Whatever that is, I need to do it get stuff and do it to the best of my abilities. Only to make people's lives better. That's it. We're not in it for ourselves. It's trophies. We want to make people's lives better and we do that. Uh, the best we can, and we always try to do it more effectively. So I'm interested in and being involved in service design, uh, wrote and designed new professional roles that didn't exist, and delivered them around the country. Connections, networks, community development, an early adopter of the recovery, people hear about recovery in mental health, so we talk about recovery 20 years ago, not the version we have now, the one that actually was working. Social Scribe 2007, we did the first part, I've been doing that ever since. Now it's the big rage. I can tell you what's wrong with the current model and how to do it right. We do uh, community based uh, development, and I didn't know that was a thing, uh, asset based community development. So just doing it, getting communities with people, finding their gates, their associations, their passions, what 
did you want to do before your life went wrong and let's try and do that again? That's what we were doing. And then I found out it was that terminology afterwards. Trauma informed, I was doing trauma informed my 2006 to 2010. So I had a, a really clear idea that uh, most women had problems with relationships and trauma, and that's it. Not the labels you've got are wrong, you shouldn't get them, take the labels off, deal with the trauma, deal with the relationships, and then get back on in life. So, so that's the day job, four to fifty people. But then that project was so successful, we had business from all over the country that in the course of the year, I came up with an opportunity to set up my first social enterprise, and that's called Starfish uh, Health Marketing. By, I think it was March, I then mailed out 40 staff, and then in September we had 80 staff, and that's grown ever since. It's now took a different business plan, which I can talk about later, but, uh, and that's uh, how I've worked in both of our organisations for the last 12 years, and so do today. So, why is it called Starfish Health and Wellbeing? I read this book, I've become obsessed about it. When I, when I get obsessed about things, I think, how can I make money? How can I make money? How can I put this into organisations? How can I do this? So I came, I read this book, I've become obsessed with this book, um, and then I said, kick up around the ideas in the book. I'm interested in ideas, I'm interested how they all come together, I'm interested how I can apply them. I'm always thinking, I think there's a business idea of 10 in that. Interesting putting ideas into action, action proven, it's doing the doing the walk and just the talk. So that's 2010 2020, social enterprise growth, starfish doing the services across the Midlands and Teesside. And then I set up a charity, thought, well, I'll set up a charity up. Um, and then I donated money to that charity, so uh, we donated £600,000 to pilot things. We give the charity the money and then we experiment and put someone on a PhD you wanted to do it. So, well, can I do a PhD? I was like, yeah, gosh, man. People on master's courses on any subject they wanted. Someone asked me, I've never said no. I do tell the staff this all the time. It's amazing that rarely anyone comes up because I know they're going to have to get signed up on the course and think, oh, I'm going to keep away from this guy. <laughs> and also, um, I'm the chair of the Archery Master Studio on hand, but we lost all of our funding and everything in 2016. So we came up with a new financial plan. It is a charity, but it's just showing business enterprise. We came up with a new plan instantly, and it serves the same all the day. It's, it's, it's in Park Road and Hartlepool. So it's had six, year, six years of no contract funding. So we had to come up with something different. My Best Connect offers professional services, so everything that I'm working with, we then uh, buy and sell and trade services to each other. So, Starfish was paying, uh, when I had all of the staff, for £65,000 a year to the day, to my day job, my hobby, pay my day job, pay people salaries. Um, when the financial times hit hard, we took staff on, we looked after them for a year or two, then gave them back. So, we sort of work in the partnership with the workbook. Um, and also, 2010, I set up two other companies with based on ideas that I got excited about. And I just held them uh, until recently, so I just sort of held companies running, just a small time over there. But, um, and now we're trying to expand both of them. So that's the next plan. So, Challenge is an amazing opportunity. I'm, uh, I'm trained in deliberate practice. You might not know what deliberate practice is, but it's a, it's a way of designing to improve uh, your effectiveness by focusing in on all of your errors. So challenges and mistakes is good. That's where the learning happens. So I'm interested in being error-centric. I'm interested in challenges. I'm interested in learning how we happen, why they happen, all the different factors, how do we overcome them. And only by becoming deliberately practicing on errors is your improvement. So you might have had a research of 10,000 hours of uh, practice, deliberate practice, to become an expert. So the, 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 the research is quite robust. I went with an international group who do this among the first deliberate practice research training uh, on psychotherapy. Um, and I got excited about the idea, so I did a doctorate, so just passed. Uh, a few corrections, sort of a doctor today ish. So the one that my driver is, we've more money in the mental health in the last decade that we've ever had. We've got a worse mental health system and we're in crisis and no one will really happen. People who work mental health services aren't happy, people who 
access the mind, not access the mind, but the body. Uh, you the constraint by bureaucracy and rules and pathways and regulations, and, and they're just stressing everyone out. It just doesn't matter. So we don't need more money in mental health. We need a reorganisation, redesign, we need innovation, we need design. No one comes, becomes successful. No organisation becomes successful. No community becomes successful without each other. And each of them is where all of the resources are. Social experts say shows that 15 unqualified, untrained people can outperform an institution. It's an amazing discovery that people together through their lived experiences are more clever and more creative than an institution. The bigger the institution, the more difficult it actually is to help people. So social experts open a child mortality in Nepal. Uh, I wanted to approve it, kept putting medics in, Professor Costello uh, went on the, the study, and they just couldn't make, they couldn't make an impact. And someone suggested to the professor, why don't we give every newly uh, pregnant mother 15 mothers? 15 mothers have been proved are better than any medical institution ever. And he said, if you're trying to model how 15 women would come together and think, he said, there's no computer to be enough. He didn't think like that originally. It's just too com complex, it's too clever. Everyone's been there, done that, and collectively, the, the power of the intelligence is amazing. And the life uh, expectancy of newborn children in Nepal went up 30% through having non qualified intervention. 30%. They couldn't touch it, and it doesn't cost much. Apart from realizing how clever we all are, and the people with the qualifications are supposed to be clever and making the situation worse. We're losing our sense of agency and our intelligence. The big league kick, um, if you want to, to get a, a social enterprise education, you need to go and speak to Ian Corley. He's amazing. In the last two years, he's had the kick from 30,000 and half a million. He employed about 25 people. Never had a business plan, never had a business plan, not interested. Thank you, Ian. Thank you very much. is to look to make charities more income generating and more sustainable. And we do that with two products, with an enterprise development element and with a social investment element. And these are the people that have made it happen. We have Access, um, I won't labour it because you can all read. Access are the foundation of social investment. It tells you a little bit of what their aims and outcomes are. Big Society Capital are the social investment arm. Our programme is called Local Access for Access and Funders, so when you see the terminology, that's how it's referred to. So what's the purpose of LARCH? Everybody's talked about their own social enterprises and what they do in their own area and how they grow those organisations. LARCH is basically a very simply a place-based approach. It's about us understanding that the people sitting in this room who are social enterprise or business want either addressing the social needs that an area has and tackling those problems, or you're a business in the room that is employing people and wants to, wants to create a better economy for the, for the people and the families that you, you have as your, as your staff or your team. And the purpose of LARCH is that we can help charities and social enterprises, PICS as you might know yourself as, help develop um, long-term sustainability through this programme mm -hmm. help, by helping you look at new ways and identifying innovative things, innovative areas that you've not looked at before to grow your organisation. That's our intention. Um, we tend to support, we want to support people who want to be different, different products to help support your financing needs, whether that be support, whether that be advice, whether that be mentoring or guidance. The ambition, it was, it was the ambition of local people large. The organisations that have come forward to develop large, it's been in the offering for since 2019, and we only got the, we only got the grant in 2020, I was in the full spec. But the people that have come forward are local organisations who have a, an, an ambition to want to grow social enterprise and want to challenge social issues and want to do it in a different way that's ever been done before. So that's the purpose of LARCH. I'm going to come to what enterprise development support is in the next few slides. And we want to work with all the communities, we want to work with the private sector, we want to work with the public sector. Such public sector, like mm -hmm. Hampton Council and Hartlepool Council, are also part of the model. And we list all the partners on the website. So this is the innovative part of LARCH, one of the innovative parts of LARCH, I should say. The enterprise development support is the piece of work that needs to happen to enable organisations to make the journey, to move from where you are today, I've got an idea, 
or I am an existing charity and I want to go to trade income, but I don't know how to do it. We are trading a little bit, but I don't understand how to take it forward. There's only me, I don't have the resource, I don't have the, the business skills, or I don't have the backup from the trustee, I don't know how to sell that to them. Whatever your challenge is, this is what the enterprise development support is about. First thing we actually want to do is start events like this and get people talking in the room and telling us what we need and where we can help, simply to raise awareness. There will be um, peer groups and community workshops exactly like this, but even more informal where you can all learn from each other. A few people have stood up today and they will form part of that. Um, there'll be review groups, so if you've got a great idea, if you sat in the room now and think I've got a great idea, I've listened to everybody speak and I've got a brilliant idea, I can tackle a problem that I know and make social impact and potentially make some money. We want you to speak to us at the very early stage, even if it's at the point before you set up, before you do what Ian said, which was go online and set up your, your organisation, just to make sure from a structural point of view we are navigating in the right place for advice and support. We, if you come to us with that idea and we think, oh my gosh, that's a brilliant idea, it's got legs, we will help you both move through a, a review group process, which will be experts from large coming together to make sure we help you in the best way to support your idea. If again, you can come up with a plan in those meetings and we say, right, great, we think you need to do some viability, viability studies to identify whether that's a great idea or not, before you invest all your own money into doing that, Latch can help you with a funded, funded um, business support package. If we think, and you come to us and say, actually, I just need to go on some training course, I need to build my knowledge on governance, I need to build my knowledge on um, building the idea, I need to look at marketing, something specific, we have a funded training package aligned to the enterprise development support, and below, there's a bit of an indication of some of the training packages and how they'll be broken up that will be delivered. It might be online, it might be face to face, it might be in small groups to give you the best chance to gain as much knowledge as you can. And that is all our funded support. If we deem that your idea is fantastic, it goes to, I'll, I'll show you the structure of that shortly, it goes to our review panels, and our review panels can, can administer small grant packages to help support your activities or your idea development. Um, if you then decide, like Loftus Community, I've got a situation where then you need to maybe look at a building, if it's a lease and you need, you need professional advice, or you look at thinking, well, I might need to look at a building, there's an empty building, local authority, I can maybe look at acquiring an asset and you need some more advice and support on that, we can help. There's an element of our, our fund that you may want investment from us, so you may say to us, well, I'm buying something or I need capital investment or I need some kind of working capital, and you don't want to go to the bank, the part of our programme enables you to access finance, but it's repayable finance and it's social investment finance. So the finance organisation, which is a key fund, have a vested interest in helping you achieve your social impact. So that's much closer to them than it would be to a traditional, or a traditional lending organisation. If you've got an idea, just for a simple and we just want to pitch it in some events later in the future, these are some of the other things that we will be doing. One of the elements that has been spoken about was, I think Paul discussed it, we have think tank groups which enable us to look at what's going on geographically in the media and what social impact we can make. So Lincoln, or Paul talked about the opportunity when he was in a community centre and they realised they don't bought this building, they realised that they need to have additional services off it, they bought the wood, then the wood led to the next thing. If there's a social issue in your area that you want to help us address, you can form part of those think tank groups to help us identify where we need to be looking to develop new social enterprises. So, what is enterprise development support? So it's all of those things with the tickets, engagement, learning and networking opportunities, and there will be a lot of learning in this process. And um, lots of support. Simply, what is it not? It's not an open grants programme and it won't be one size fits all. And anybody who's already had an initial conversation with anybody from the large family will know that we'll talk to you, we'll start the conversation, we'll help you incubate the idea, and then we'll take you through the right channel. So it isn't a one size fits all. And we definitely are not an open grants programme. There are grants available in, a, in, a, in addition to our programme that are aligned to the business development. Blended finance, blended finance, it's very simple terminology here. 
is, is finance, social investment finance, which we pay about, and it's blended with the grant funding to make social investment more affordable. So that's like very simple terms. If you said to me, we will need, you would say to me, you would say to key fund our partner, but if we identified that's what we needed, I need £50,000 loan to buy this building, but I can't really afford a £50,000 loan. All your financial profiles have been done, all your business plan have done, all your feasibility studies have been done. Okay, well actually, by giving you a 10 grand grant to, to support that, that finance package might be the way that makes it more affordable to you. These are some of the options of conversations. However, the finance, the key funds run our finance, we apply directly to key funds for our finance, what do us. <coughs> so depending on where you're at in your journey and what you need, let us know. How partnership works, how large works. Large, the innovation in large, not only the enterprise development arm, which currently doesn't exist anywhere else, um, for organisations who are developing, who are a charity or social enterprise who want to develop new organisations. The other innovation is how the idea of development is cultivated through the local area panels. The local area panels are made up of probably some of the best people you're going to find in Red Crown, Cleveland and Hartlepool. And they are people who probably, they've done everything, they've done it all, they've learned, they're still doing more all the time. So they are the best people to make up our panels. It shows you the structure of those panels. I work with those panels very closely to make sure they they do what they used to do in their local area and I provide them some support. Um, our report director is Richard Match, you did manage report, and again that's made up of voluntary sector and organisations that are part of the area and they understand the challenges and issues in those areas. Um, we've got funders, we've got the investment partner, we've got outside organisations as part of those as well. Uh, local access is hosted by Vaughan, you might have seen that on our website, so Vaughan acts as independent chair and they host um, large. Um, I, I, I work for Vaughan, so they are my, my line manager, in fact. They, if you don't know who Vaughan are, Vaughan are the regional organisation for infrastructure development, and they're based in Newcastle, so they cover the regional area. Other ways to engage, we, we've linked you up with those, talked about those already. The Latch Network is you. You are the Latch Network. You will continue to form the Latch Network as we go forward the need of peer groups and you will work with some of the large area-based panels to mentor and support. And so the next two slides are organisations who come forward with ideas and they're just anonymised, but it gives you an indication of how we would see our funding being de um, delivered and how large actually works <coughs> in real terms. I'm not going to read them because I know we should just going to stand up in 10 seconds and tell me to be quick. So, when you get this slide, if you want to read those two sections in your own time, then just come back to me with any questions, that would be fantastic. If you're a business that I'm in today, and you think, oh well, you know, we, we work closely with Red Cross Legal Ambassadors, we don't really get involved with social enterprise, we don't really get involved with um, the voluntary, voluntary sector of charities, it's really important that you, the businesses can support, the private businesses can support the development of the social enterprises because Businesses are really good at taking risks, businesses are really good at developing market plans, they're really good at developing income, they're really good when something's not working, of thinking what can we do differently and better. Large is an opportunity to enable organisations to think like charities and enterprises in the room, how do I do this differently and better, and how can Large help me do that? That's what we're here for, but we want to link up the dots as well. So we've got We've got Red Cross Legal Ambassadors here from the local authority and there's a great team in linking those organisations together this way because as organisations we know you've been really challenged, we know you deal with lots of, lots of issues in health and housing, we know you deal with lots of food poverty, we know we're dealing with lots of fuel poverty and you're doing lots of work already and often the businesses that are in this area don't actually know what, what you're doing and why you're doing it. So part of our role will be making sure we link those up and help you to achieve the mentor and support that you need, not only from large from your local community. So if you are here today and you have an idea that you think can deliver social impact and you want some new information on how you can create new revenue, initially have a chat with us. That's the first step. If you're a social enterprise or a charity and you want to sign up for some of the workshops we're delivering, there'll be some information delivered by Lola on that further detail and you can tell us what it is you want and where you think you can get some more help. If you want to get involved more in large and become part of our area-based panels or review panels with your existing social enterprise and you've got lots of expertise that you want to share, we'd love you to be part of that. And finally, go on our website and find out more and join our mailing list because it's just been, just been launched and it's quite recently. <laughs>
loom large and can you support me with the support I physically need that I've had in the past from our CBC? So it's probably worth another conversation because we, we are working with an organisation that have got core charity and social enterprise or can establish social enterprise. So we have to invest in the social enterprise element, but that doesn't stop your core business from um, setting up a social enterprise to deliver certain things. So the education, training, support, PA and other elements you could access through the enterprise development. We have got quite a big funnel, so we're trying to do about 500 conversations and then that conversations go further down. The further you go down, the more you take um, uh, from, from large parts of the model. So I would encourage you, and I'm happy to speak outside of this for yourself as well, but I would encourage you to come back and think, well, actually, we need to uh, get that right and then see how we could um, put in. Because we, the ultimate thing for large is we want to create a culture change. It's not eight new kicks, it's not eight business plans. It's actually how do we fit, and that's what I've always been interested in, is uh, you have to get commissioned, and then you have to do as I say, well you don't. You, it's how much you can bend, and I don't want to break the rules, you have to bend the rules all the time, and it annoys me. It annoys me because quite often you know how to do it more effectively, and some contracts are coming and you have to do all the paperwork. And I think, I just eventually, I, just, I don't want to be answerable to anyone. I want to make money, and I want to help people who instead of seeing themselves as, can I be helped, become the helper. I'm going to charity, yeah. and there's nothing wrong with that. Yeah. For you to access the opportunities you've spoken about through the council, yeah. there are structures that you need yeah. to follow, which is what you're yeah, the boxes. Which, it's not about ticking boxes, it's about positioning yourself correctly, and that's what, what we have had your application to large I was in the meeting, yeah. and we have talked about it, we would like to support in building those structures. Yeah, that's but fun. you were passion, too passionate to. Yeah, I'm too passionate, and I get to get strong. That's what I, I have the same problem. I have the same problem. So we I run an organisation which is limited by guarantee, or a non-profit organisation, and it's performing arts school, which we on the road for many years. And even my staff here, we run an apprenticeship. We take volunteers as well, very young people. So we support health and or health and well-being using the power of the arts and culture. There may be some deliverables that you do need to meet, but it won't be based on numbers. It might be outcomes, social outcomes that you need to reach. That's the beauty as well with us working with Key Fund, who, um, who are also here now. They, because their social outcomes, it's really important to them, even if you look to them for finance, the way that, that, pro, that way that that's delivered, it's critical that you meet their social outcomes in, the la in the line with the investment. So it's a completely different way of working. You are right. You probably are behind. You probably see it very differently. Some of the areas that we talked about on the on the slides that um, are, are, have got a much more developed social economy in the areas, and we don't have that. So it's all new language to everybody. So please don't see us as as a, as a, as a looking for numbers as deliverables. It there will be there will be some elements of it that do involve that. But yes, we can work to find out more. Thank you. Ian, did you want to say anything on that? Yes. Yeah. I think it's just, it, it's understanding what your business model is for each one, so it's, 
there's people do great things all the time. So it's like if if it's great and you're not going to make any money on it, then it's your charity. That's fine. And then if there's a contract you can deliver for someone, then you have to bid for that. And we could probably help with that. But think about how we do that if you want to do it. But then the social enterprise it, it is commercial. It has to make money. And I, and then my advice to everyone is always set up as many companies as you can. You can close them. But a charity social enterprise working together can cross trade and you can hit targets there, you can hit targets there. So there's nothing wrong with a couple of grants, there's nothing wrong with contracts, but you need a bit of the freedom and you need, but you really need to think, how do I make money? Make money's okay. Be making money for the greater good. You're not exploiting anyone and all of your service is going back into them people. So anyone who hasn't got anything is going to get everything you do for nothing. And then if people know that, they'll sponsor that. So you can actually get, I know in Hartlepool we've got You Save Lives campaign, and it's a big fund there running the campaign. Whatever we raise will be match fund, and all that's going to go into wellbeing and mental health and suicide prevention. So we raise 40,000, we get 80, 80k. People want to be seen to be part of that. So it's, it's thinking of them type of things, how do you maximise on your sale, how do you subsidise it, who wants to be sponsored, who wants to you know, make a big noise and, and get a lot of attention and then people want to be around you and then you charge them for that. And I'm just wondering, what are the benefits of having a mentor when you're engaging in social enterprise? I, I talk to, I know myself eventually. I'll go away, I'll drive back and, oh, why? So I think there's something really important about being, we've talked about this a lot the last few days. Everyone should have a mentor and everyone should have a mentee. You, everyone, there's, there's people who've got skills and knowledge in every area. There's people smarter than us in every area. <coughs> so learn from them. And, and when you learn, be quiet. Even me, I have to be quiet. <laughs> and have a mentee so you can tell them. And it's very reciprocal. So if you haven't got these three-way relationships, you're not doing the full benefit from it. And the other thing is to be a professional novice. Now, what a good mentor would do is know what the professional abilities of the person is, but they also know to have a novice's mindset. So it's, if we go and meet anyone, I've got loads of things I could tell you, but if I don't listen, I'll annoy you. So a professional novice has to bring all of the skills and wait for them to be used. And if that takes a year, it takes a year. The worst thing ever is salespeople pitching know it all, so technical people. We do, they annoy the hell out of us, don't So you don't know, want someone's like, you know, sort of saying, this is a pre-packaged education. So um, I boringly studied, studied uh, management at Durham Business School, but I was interested in the entrepreneur side. And I, and I, knew, I knew that all the people could, could write amazing essays, people can get MBAs there, and they knew nothing about anyone, and didn't care, it was all about profit. What, what really goes on is practice. It's a practice, it's a craft, it takes time. You've got to learn it out. You make loads of mistakes, and that's fine. If you make a mistake, you just keep going. But have the, have the mindset, it's learn. So you mentioned on one of your slides about some training and workshops. Can you tell us a bit more about that? Is it just like half a day or? Yeah, thanks for the question. Yeah, the workshops are about two elements to the workshop. One is identifying where you fit in the workshop. So some workshops are specific for startups, some workshops are for if you've got an idea or you're a charity and you're looking to develop it further, and some workshops if you're looking to scale. So when they're presented to you, you'll see them very clear, you'll see where you fit. If there's something on there that you think I don't fit into, and I would like some additional workshops on something else, whether it's governance, whether it's sitting in a room with five other social enterprises, you just want to do that as part of your peer mentor. This is, what the, this is what the flexibility of the programme is. We want to hear from you. We've got to start giving you some idea of what the workshops look like in the deliverable plan, but within that deliverable plan, there is some flexibility in what we, what we create as we move forward. You've got to think, we've only really been, what would we say, you've been delivering since January, but really only for the last five weeks. So, yeah, it's been slowly yeah. coming to fruition. So. Yeah, so we're still in our real infancy. We wanted to put something on and we wanted to build the relationships with the, the training organisations we work with, but it might it might scale back to you telling us actually I'm not ready for any of those things yet. I 
or will be in October, and I can look at them in October, but in the meantime, between now and October, this is what I think I need, and that will form part of the initial conversation. I, I'm, I'm wondering if you could share with us um, if an organisation wants to diversify their income streams and maximise their income, what's the best piece, the one piece of advice that you could give that organisation? Oh, collaborate. Yeah, I think it's hugely important. I mean, talking to uh, other businesses uh, or other social entrepreneurs uh, about what they're doing. Uh, and, and so, yeah, collaboration is hugely important. important. <laughs> Building partnerships. This is the same thing really, but you know, getting groups of people together spawns ideas. Uh, but it also provides support uh, and makes you feel confident. You know, when you have those conversations with people and other people say, that sounds a really good idea, it kind of gives that impetus uh, to get going. So, you know, um, what, one of the things we do at the uh, School for Social Entrepreneurs is a, uh, a match trading uh, programme, which is called Community Business Trade Up. And so we match, uh, we match our traded income uh, up to, I mean, it depends which programme. Sometimes it's £4,000, sometimes it's £10,000. So we look at uh, how much your traded income was the previous year, and then for every pound you increase that up to whatever level we set, uh, we will then match that income. So I did the uh, community, community trade up programme with the School for Social Entrepreneurs about three years ago, uh, before I worked there. Uh, and that was one of the reasons why I partnered up with a promoter. Uh, but the partnerships that we created in the village, I think goes beyond, I mean, I think the way I, I presented it was about referring to each other, but I think there's a real thing about um, knowledge and, and information sharing. Uh, when, you, when you're noticing gaps that you simply don't have uh, the resource to deal with, but somebody else in your town might. Uh, so by developing a, re you know, a relationship with somebody, it can lead to them ringing you, ringing you up and saying, could you do anything about this? You know? uh, and, and, and the other bit, which is, there's some contracts coming up, uh, and I think we could probably do something together, and we'd do something really nicely together. So, uh, collaboration, I think, is, is crucial. Talk to other people, find like-minded people, collaborate, partnerships. Okay. Thank you. That's very helpful. Um, can we give our panelists a round of applause? For you? Since five or six years ago, um, we got together because we wanted to um, talk to each other, to support each other, and to hopefully encourage other people to engage in social enterprise. If they had a germ of an idea or they wanted to do something but they weren't quite sure how to go, around, go, go about it. And we've put on several events during those, during those years, uh, looking at social enterprise and hearing from people who've done it and how-to classes and that sort of thing. If anybody is interested in becoming a member of Talent or learning more about it, I'll leave some cards on this table. Please contact me, please email me, and uh, we can arrange to have a meeting about that and invite you along to our next group meeting. This morning, uh, I hope you got something out of it. Uh, definitely, <coughs> speakers, thank you so much for, for coming along, uh, Ian, Paul, cool. Mika. Um, if you've got anything else that you'd like to add now, please, you know, just feel free to stand up. Um, thank you to Rashida for watching.